Hey, welcome back to another devlog from my tower defense RPG game that I'm currently calling Project TRS. This devlog is going to be a little bit different because I'm really behind on my like self-imposed deadlines and I've been procrastinating this video a lot, so it's going to be a little bit more like casual and unscripted. I haven't been completely idle over the last couple months. I did make a few bug fixes and added a floating text system to help with player feedback. Previously, if you couldn't afford something, nothing happened. Now you get a nice little message telling you why nothing's happening. So yeah, not to brag, but uh, I've been pretty productive. The biggest change I wanted to make for this new version was to rework the skeletons. Their AI was pretty buggy and weird, and in general, the pathfinding wasn't implemented very well. It felt really, like, fragile, like they could break if the slightest thing went wrong. I think the big reason for this is I was using a finite state machine for their AI logic, which is a great pattern, but it just started to kind of break down and get a bit complicated and unwieldy. Some advice I read on, like, a random internet forum was to start with a state machine, and when that starts to break down, to upgrade to a behavior tree, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've never really built a behavior tree or even really worked with them, but luckily there's a super awesome plugin called Behave that another game dev YouTuber named Bitbrain made, and it does it all for me. I'd sort of been dragging my feet on implementing it for a while now. I even procrastinated so hard I made a whole other game, but finally last night I bit the bullet and dove in. It actually ended up being a lot easier than I expected. The behavior tree stuff works perfectly, shout out Bitbrain. However, it did surface some other bugs and some dumb design decisions in other parts of the code. Namely, that the way I get the point for the skeletons to find paths to surrounding structures is pretty dumb and I need to rework it entirely. Right now I have a fixed number of spots around the building and I assign skeletons to each of those spots, but this causes bugs in a lot of different ways. The biggest one is that these spots don't have a way to check for collisions, so a skeleton could be assigned to that spot and try to pathfind to it, but there could could be a rock or something in the way, which would cause it to break because there's no path to that spot. So that's where I'm at currently. My next step is definitely to work on that structure spot finder pathfinding issue, so I'll check in when I have some progress on that. It's been a few days, but I'm back with a fresh haircut and I was able to finish the spot finder thing. Originally, I wanted to rework the entire system, but I couldn't figure out an elegant way to find the spots surrounding a structure. So I ended up just going with my old system, but now I just explicitly check for collisions. Here in the game, I have a test map set up so you can see it working. I also have path drawing on for debug purposes. If I spawn a skeleton, you see they initially pathfind to the town hall, which is correct. And then if I block their path by building a tower, they then pathfind to the tower. Once they destroy the tower, their pathfinding continues to the town hall, exactly like it's supposed to. This is the behavior I was trying to achieve, and the behave plugin made this so easy, so I'm super happy about that. Now I just need to add in the chase behavior and the idle behavior. For the chase behavior, I had an idea of making each skeleton have different aggro rates to add a bit of spice to the game. I want to create a scale where on one end there's the skeletons that will never aggro to the player and will always follow the path, and then on the other end there's skeletons who aggro super easily to the player. Then each skeleton can lie somewhere on that scale. I feel like adding a bit of variety to the skeleton behavior will make the game more interesting and dynamic. These last two behaviors will wrap up the skeleton AI overhaul that I've been working on, so I'm going to get started on that and certainly not just play PAL World for 15 hours straight. Okay, it's been a few days and despite my crippling power world addiction, I was actually able to finish up the skeleton behaviors and get the skeleton AI to a place where I feel pretty comfortable with it. Here in the engine we can see kind of what the final behavior tree for the skeleton looks like. This is by no means a exhaustive overview or tutorial of what a behavior tree is, it's just kind of a general rundown of how I implemented it for my game. Uh, I'll leave some links in the descriptions to some super helpful stuff, including Bitbrain's tutorials on his own Behave plugin, and as well as some articles that I found helpful. The top level node is a selector reactive node, which basically just means that it's going to pick any one of its subnodes that succeeds and run that, and then since it's reactive, it will restart when something fails. 
I did this so that we're continuously checking for the aggro player sequence even if we're navigating to a structure. So basically, the skeleton every tick or whatever will check to see if it's aggroed, and if it is, it'll go into the chase player sequence. Uh, if not, it'll go into the navigate to structure sequence. I have two sub-sequences within the navigate to structure. The first one is their assigned structure, which is like the town hall or whichever building they should be going to in an ideal situation. However, if they get blocked from their pathfinding and they can't reach their assigned structure, we go into the navigate to the closest structure sequence. This isn't super ideal because they won't actually start attacking the most ideal structure to get back to their original structure pathfinding, but it works for now. So if you completely block a skeleton in, he'll just start attacking whichever building he's closest to. And then if none of that works, they're not aggroed and they can't navigate to a structure, we just have an idle sequence where they'll basically just wander around randomly. This really doesn't happen in the game except in the brief moments after the town hall is destroyed and the game is fading out. Uh, the skeletons don't really have anything to do, so they just kind of wander around randomly. I wanted to add this in just in case I want to have skeletons in a situation where it's not like the classic tower defense mode. Maybe your character explores or something and finds some skeletons just chilling in the woods and then you have to fight them. That's kind of what the idle sequence is for. I'm probably going to expand a lot on this behavior tree in the future, but for now it works and I feel like it feels pretty good. Now that I finished up the skeleton overhaul, I feel like the game's in like a pretty solid spot. Uh, I certainly need to do a lot more refactoring and like cleaning up the code because it got a little bit spaghetti near the end there. But now I can start kind of thinking about where I want to go from here. And the game was never really meant to just be the like tower defense wave and then daytime you build and then wave again. I always kind of wanted to add in a little bit more to it. My idea was that you would kind of have like a Stardew Valley-esque sort of management side of the game where you would do quests for villagers and gather resources and then every so often you'd get raided by the skeletons and have to deal with that. I also had this concept of like a world map or something where like other towns would request your help with skeletons so then you'd have to manage multiple towns all the while leveling up your character, gathering resources and doing quests and all of that stuff. The game's certainly really far off from that right now but I think the kind of bare bones stuff is in place and I feel good about moving on to the more RPG and like sim management stuff. As for what I'm gonna immediately start working on, I definitely think tower improvement is big on the list. A lot of people ask me about how to improve the towers, kind of just assuming you could since it's like a tower defense game and that's a big part of tower defenses. I think that should be relatively simple to implement and I can do that next. I also want to work on character customization because it is an RPG, so so, you know, that's a little bit important. And I want to add more stat upgrades to the player, as well as like an inventory and different equipment maybe and stuff like that. I also think there's a lot of room for polish and kind of like general atmosphere. The game sort of feels kind of lifeless and I'm not a big fan of the sound effects or music. So improving that as I go, I think will do a lot for the game. That's pretty much it for this devlog. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I know this one was kind of different. I was sort of trying something out that was like a little bit easier actually for me to film and edit and all that. So let me know what you thought of it and maybe I can keep doing them like this instead of, I don't know, the more like polished, I guess, kind that I have done in the past. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all the YouTube-y stuff. Yeah, until next time, thanks.